All right, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about oxidation numbers, which is looking at the charge an atom would happen to take uh, inside of a compound. We have some rules. I have these rules broken down into two different slides, and these rules uh, are all kind of ones that you need to know in order to be able to solve the problems that we're going to work on in class. I have the rules that I find more important to be bolded. So, for example, two and four on, the, on this slide would be the more important of the rules that you need to know. So uh, rule number one, just anytime you have an element or a compound, its oxidation number, its charge would be zero. So for example, if I just had calcium listed on a worksheet, its charge would be zero, or O2, its charge would also be zero. Binary or two atom compounds, and we're talking about molecular compounds here, the more electronegative of the two atoms, the one that's closer to fluorine, would take the predicted charge. So for example, if I had oxygen and I had chlorine, um, well, that's not a great example. Rule number two, so if I have binary compounds, we're talking about uh, covalent compounds here, molecular compounds, the more electronegative takes the predicted charge. So if I were to happen to have carbon and oxygen together, oxygen is in group uh, six, and it's closer to fluorine, and then carbon's in group four, it's further from fluorine, so oxygen's more electronegative, it's gonna take its predicted charge of minus two. Fluorine's always gonna be minus one, Oxygen is minus two, so we use this one an awful lot, except when oxygen is a peroxide, which is minus one, and that's hard for uh, students to see on their own, so normally I let you know that a peroxide's happening here. Or if oxygen happens to be bonded to a halogen, in which case it's gonna be plus two. But we use this first part all the time, O is equal to minus two. This is one of the most common rules that we're gonna use. And the reason why is because oxygen is part of an oxyanion, and oxyanions are really common in many of the compounds that we look at. So be very familiar with this rule, O is equal to minus two. Moving on to the second slide, um, these, these rules that we happen to have here, group one and two, are gonna form plus one and plus two ions respectively, so that's just predicted if we're talking about a metal to a non-metal or a metal to a polyatomic ion. Those first two groups are gonna take their predicted ion charge. Hydrogen, when it's bonded to a more electronegative, in other words, if it's on the front end of a formula, if it's on the left side of the formula, it's gonna be a plus one charge, whereas if it's on the back side of the formula, if it's bonded to a metal, it's gonna be a minus one charge. So basically, hydrogen ion versus the hydride ion. Oxidation numbers in a compound add to zero. That's a really common thing that we're gonna do. So if we have a compound that we happen to be looking at, all the pluses and minuses need to go together to make zero. So you can infer some of the charges based on some of these patterns and then all of the overall charges have to add to zero and that's how we can problem solve many of these problems. Finally, the oxidation numbers in an ion, a polyatomic ions, where we're gonna see this happen, need to add to that ion charge. So if we happen to be talking about phosphate, um, all of the ions, all of the particles, all of the atoms need to end up uh, having an oxidation number set that equals minus three since the phosphate anions charge is minus three. The easiest way to really use these rules is to practice. You're gonna have a couple practice sheets that you can do in class. And then I also have example problems. You can click this red button in the top right corner and that'll take you to a video of some example problems. Take a look and see how we apply these. So after watching this video, you should know that there's some rules you're gonna need to use for uh, determining oxidation numbers of the atoms inside of a compound. And when it comes to these rules, there's some that are more important than others, specifically knowing that O is equal to minus two, we're gonna use that one a lot. And then the oxidation numbers in a compound add to zero, and then the oxidation numbers in a polyatomic ion add to the polyatomic ion charge. Practice those rules, and I hope this helps.